so good morning gardeners um, today we're going to do everything El Cantare so um, I've got here a whole selection of different forms of El Cantare's and they are some seedlings there's also some hair pups and there's some um, adventurous pups which is the pups that grow in the axles and we're going to do some potting of the different kinds and using the different types of mixes that I like to use and have been successful with growing them for several years and we're going to make a start with some of the really simple ones we'll start with some of the seedlings so some really young seedlings that are a couple of years old now um, these are glaciariana seedlings and they're a species and so they're a green form they're in little 50 mil pots at the moment and have been for quite some time now a couple of years now and so we're going to upsize those to a larger size pot the pots that are usually used for the different alcants are 180 mil or 185 i also use the big 200s for the larger pups and i use two types of mixes so i'll just get the different pots So I use bromeliad pots, which are bought specifically. So there's lots and lots of holes, as you can see in these pots. Um, good drainage because we don't want them getting waterlogged at all. They're gonna be in these pots for some time. So this is a 200 squat, and this one here is a 165, and this one here is a 1800. So they're the three sizes that I'm gonna to use today. And what I'm gonna do is I'll start with the little seedlings and move up so using a mix that I get um, created at a landscaping supplies place um, now this contains nutribark which is compost essentially and on top of that it also has pine fines or softfall is another name for it and then finally I add some propagation sand to the mix now when I get the mix delivered originally it comes with a little bit of builder sand to it as well but because we're going to be doing some of the seedlings and I want to increase the root development I'm just going to mix in some of the propagation sand just to keep the mix a little bit more friable just for these few that I'm doing to start with okay so fairly simply we're just going to fill a pot yay fill the pot no biggie there um, my seedling where did she go here one seedling now this is in coir fiber it's got a really nice root ball and it's just going to go into the center of the pot it's going to be topped up to the same height that it was growing in its original pot and press down nice and firm to keep it nice and stable. Now to that, sorry, looking for the fertilizer. <coughs> Alcants are big feeders. They like a lot of food um, during the growing period and they need it every few months. They also need lots of water. So this product is called Osmocote Exact. It's little, little, bitty, tiny, tiny little prills. And I'm only gonna scatter a few of those around because they've got a very high potassium and magnesium and other essential elements, NPK, nitrogen as well. And so that little guy's already done up. So he's ready to go back out into the greenhouse with a tag and him when I get to it. I'll have to do that while I'm here. So I don't get confused since I've got a few different types. So most people will have our tags. Now there's two sides to a tag. There's the soft, shiny, flat side. And then there's the back where you'll feel two little indentations at the top or one indentation at the top and it feels more rough. That's the side that you want to write on. Um, it'll reduce the fading of your tags. Um, it'll stop pencil rubbing off a lot easier than writing on the smooth surface. And if you're using one of these Artline Garden pens, 
they're quite successful and they don't fade unlike a sharpie which would fade which is just a nightmare then when you go back to plants later on um, and you can't find their name especially when you're doing hundreds upon hundreds so glasuriana tag goes in it now I also normally date them um, especially with seedlings I won't date this one because I need to go back to its main batch to find its date we're in 2022 these would have been planted in 2017 as a seed so they're a few year old now <coughs> behind me you can see on the table that's a glasuriana um, that's mum that came into flower December a couple of years ago that was used for hybridization as you see it's fully popped up we'll be taking off some of those pups later on now talking of hair pups this is elk batman this is the original elk batman that i registered several years ago and mum long and long gone this is her stem in the middle all of the axle pups have been removed and potted up and i've still got one here to show you and the mum was popped aside fed and she's produced just a few more pups this original batman um, is marked and tagged the original number one Batman so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these few remaining pups and I'm just going to lever them away from her old stalk so they don't have any root system at all um, they're not formed any in the leaf axles of the mum they're formed around the base of her so they are hair pups. They will be clones of the mum though. So they still carry the Batman name. So we'll take off the three larger ones and that just leaves me with two itty bitty little hair pups that remain. And these two hair pups are gonna stay on her. Tag goes back in. And again, I'm gonna feed it. Even though there's nothing left for her herself, um, her Mary stem, which is the growth part of your plant will continue to feed these little babies until they're the size of those ones I just took off. So these last couple of little hair pups are going to get to the side. Okay so normally hair pups I wouldn't be treating them any differently to when they're that size than any other plant. I'm going to plant them in the same potting mix because I've already got the sand in this mix. And once again, they're very green, so it's gonna be really hard to tell them from any other plant. Now they move around a lot in a pot. You don't want them moving around because that'll disturb their newly formed roots and they don't like to be disturbed. So, favorite friend, a pair of chopsticks. So simply breaking your chopsticks and then putting them on either side of your elk hand will then hold it in place. And this goes the same for any new pup that you're potting up that you don't want moving around because you don't want their roots breaking off, their new little roots. Packing him back in the game with a little bit of additional mix. And he's all done and ready to go. That's another one out of the way. Once again, I'll get a tag for that in a moment. Now these are some hair pups that were put in a community pot a while ago now. So the giant elkant that's behind me, which stands and you yep that's him over there so that guy there stands over six foot tall it's a really really large usa clone these hair pups were put aside back in april of 2020 they were put into the coil fiber they've now got a nice root system so i'm going to take them out of these pots as well and i'm just gonna this is a bit cruel i'm gonna hold my plants and i'm going to drop the pot just like so and then I can easily separate my hair pants I'm not that way I'm not damaging their roots because once again these are hair pups but these now have got a root system so they're also going to get treated the same way as the ones that I've just done in the same mix and I'm going to end up with four of that big one behind me so that big one no longer produces hair pups it did for the first probably five or six years, but then it stopped. When they get to full maturity, they seem to stop producing hair pups. Um, now that 
particular one doesn't produce axle pups. It flowers and then it dies, unfortunately. So the only way to get that exact plant is hair pups. So I've got a few of those around the place. It does take time. Now the other options we've got here is another species. This is Australianus. Now the Australiana um, are planted in Koya once again. These ones were the final axle pups from mum. Now they were growing up the stem even though mum had died. They were growing up where the leaf bracts would have once been. And so these ones are not hair pups. They're the actual axle pups and they were really, really tight. And that's their root ball after being in this pot now for two years. So they've grown really well, big root ball. And again, just prying them apart is the best way. And then you've got yourself another plant ready to be potted up. Which then leads us to some of the ones that are a couple of years older. These again are seedlings. Um, these are Imperialis crossed vinicolor. Seeds went down four years ago for these. They've been planted in a multi tray and allowed to grow on. There are some smaller ones, there's also an extensor as well. And there are still some smaller ones that are not done as well. Those ones I won't be keeping. It's only the bigger ones that I'm going to want to keep out of that clutch. And once again, this is a Batman. Now this is a axle pup from the original Batman. And it's currently sitting in a little 180. And I'm going to up that one to the 200. Once they go into 200, I don't usually put them into anything bigger. Um, for quite some time. Eventually they'll go into 450s, 450 mil I should say, and then eventually they go into the largest size orchid pot that you can find and buy and they're absolute monsters. But they've got lots of drainage because there's an issue that you can get with your alcants which is in, in heavy rain where they will rot off at the base um, and fall out of their pots. Now when that happens you can lose your plants completely. Now this particular one, those of you that grow elk ants know that spiders like to live inside them. So I use tongs to go into their leaf axles to remove the debris. I don't particularly like getting bitten by spiders. Now the really big ones on the property don't only have spiders in them, they also have snakes in them. So definitely not keen on getting my hands in amongst them. Now the tongs are a really great way to just slip your, your tongs down, keeping your hands out of the way while you pull out all of the debris that's down in their leaf axles if you're just doing a tidy up. Alright, so this one's been planted up into a 200 now. Like I said, big feeders, so it's going to get a food. Um, so I'm going to whack in just a few. Probably when I say a few, I mean a third of a teaspoon, maybe, if that just around the surface, just so it's got some nutrients just to give it a kick start and get it growing. Remembering these are not gonna color up at this age. They're just, this one's just starting to get its little dark tips, which Black Batman has. Um, for those of you that don't know, Batman was named because the mum, when I had the mum, I've got um, little micro bats that live on this property. And the micro bats were pollinating um, a lot of the flowers from the original Batman that I registered. So when Mum was in flower, um, and it was not named at that stage, we knew what it was, we had um, its tags written out and everything, but it wasn't named. And when it went into flower for photographic purposes for registration, I noticed all the microbats feeding on it. So hence that's why this one was named Batman. And that's Batman there. So I will put a tag on that so I don't miss out so once again riding on the rough edge side of the tag um, now I do it a little differently I write its name and then I actually put in Axel versus hair pups when I'm doing them so that I know the difference when it comes to the plants it's just me a little OCD when it comes to knowing the difference between seedlings etc now seedlings here's another one 
Now this is a divine plum seedling. Now the divine plum seedlings, um, you can only get divine plum seedlings um, after they've flowered and grown and they usually don't curl like this one. There was a select form out of about 2,000 I think seedlings or so. We had a lot of flower, we had a lot of seed. It was about 2,000 or so and out of the 2,000 or so we ended up with about 10 that have these curled leaves. Now these go a dark, dark red, almost black shade. I won't say black, black because no such plant exists as such. Um, so the curled leafed ones were separated from the remaining batch and all of these curled ones are treated differently as far as we kept them and they've not been sold on. There's only a few that have been released um, of these really curled varieties. Um, and that's because mum is still growing the original one, which is a really, really big one, is still growing. And that's my Zulu. Zulu hasn't been registered yet because it's yet to flower, has not produced any hair pups at all. Um, so I suspect it won't. And I also, because it's been growing for about five years here now, um, and I also suspect that it may not produce any axle pups either. So the only way to reproduce uh, Zulu may be from seed. So again, the process starts again, growing it from seed and then seeing how it responds um, to separating them, whether they all still end up with that curled leaf effect. Once again, give this one a feed because these are babies and so they're hungry. And that one's done as well all right now that one its tag says divine plum and it's a divine plum cross in fact with another variety and what i'll actually do is i'm just going to on the right side put its formula and put zulu on that one so it's part of what we call the zulu grex and out of the zulu grex certain ones will be called different things so there you go there's another one done now looking behind that really big big guy what i'll do is i'll go over and i'll snap off a pup and we'll treat it the same way so de-leafing it i don't know if you'll hear me from over there but we'll give it a go Skirt's been deleted. It's going to take its flower off and bring it inside the shed. That's right. Skirt's been deleted all the way up to the axles of the plant, and then I can access each of its pups by levering them away from the bum and removing them. And it should be that easy. If it's not that easy, you need to clear more of your skirt, or your pups are not ready yet to come away. Even a large one, just simply remove it. And snap it off. Now, we want a nice clean break and a nice heel. Now, if you break these up higher, don't worry. Remove several of the leaves and then taking that pup, put it back into a leaf axle of another plant or in a vase of another plant and then it will send down roots from here. Now, I've got a plant, see if I can, it's down on the ground outside. It's a divine plum and I'm gonna bring it in. It broke. It broke um, when we got lots and lots of rain. About six months ago, our heavy rains up here started from La Nina. And it's a silver plum. And silver plums here for me with lots of rainfall don't like me very much. And so it broke when I went to move it one day. It snapped off in its pot right at the base in line with the soil. Sorry, I'm just gonna put the name on these so I don't get the pots mixed up. So it broke off right at the base. Now it's a full big plant and I was worried I'm gonna lose it. Now silver plum only produced by seed and so 
in order to get them, we've got to grow them full size, get seed, grow it, 10 years later, we've got seed. And it's one of those plants that grow really well out in the sun, it's got a nice color, um, but unfortunately, like I said, it broke off and it was quite mature. Had another couple that had been damaged by um, tree fall. But this particular one snapped off at its base. See, it's a big one. The glove up. Because it's been hiding up in a garden in the shade ever since. It's sitting in a pot that's empty. The only thing it had in the base of the pot was a very, very fine amount of straight bark, just the pine fines, nothing else. I've not fed this thing, I've not done anything other than leave it in the shade. I've not watered it, it's had lots and lots of rainfall. And I want to have a look, start with, we'll get rid of some of what's in it, and hopefully there won't be any sneaky snakies, which I don't think there is, because I've already moved this from the main garden. I'll give it a proper clean up later on. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything gonna come crawling out at me. Okay, so let's get it out of the pot and let's see what's happened to it since then. So, like I said, this one snapped off. Yeah. Oh dear. So, it's developed a root ball. It's developed it from the merry stem. You can see a beautiful root system there. And so now all it needs is to be cleaned up a little. Some of those lower leaves I'll remove from this one because they were damaged and it's now growing really well and it's much healthier than it was. So just working around the base in the same order that the leaves are growing if you try to take them off and they're not in the right order, that's when you end up with all that really leftover skirt um, of old leaf around the base, which you don't want because that will rot, especially if you pot them up that deep. They will rot, that dead leaf matter. So you do try to get it all off and have a really nice clean stem. I've gone to all the trouble of saving this one. I now don't want to go and stick it in a pot with a whole heap of dead leaves. So it's got a really nice, clean base. You see that? There's no leftover leaves at all. So now we're ready to repot this one and it can go back out into the shade because as I said it's been in the shade now for a while. We're still in summer, the last of summer. So from there they'll go in the trailer in a moment. Yep, so repot this guy back up again. Now it's a really big plant so it's not going into A200. We'll go back into one of the big 450s. Pot it up again back to its height. I think I've covered all the alcants for the day. Anyway, that's me, finished. Um, finally, the last thing to do with all of them, before they go back out in the garden, everything here gets sprayed with Congard, including the alcants. Um, it's an insecticide, okay? So this is, to prevent any scale. Elks don't tend to get scale, but anything that gets moved around the garden from one spot to another, especially if it's been growing outside, will get a spray so as not to infect any other plants on the property. And that, my dears, is how we go about planting up all of our different types of elkets. Hope you find that was some useful information. I'm pretty sure we all know how to do it. But it's just the different stages and people quite often don't know the differences and how to treat hair pups versus a seedling or an axle pup, etc. Now it did snap off and I did, there it is, one big Glaceriana pup. Now you can leave these for a few days or weeks in a pot and they will develop a root from their base or by just simply cleaning up a few of those lower leaves and exposing the merry stem. By taking away these laterals, it encourages the plant to start to send down roots. So it's now got a nice clean area all ready to pot on into a pot and go out into the garden because these guys love the sun. It's come from the sun, so it's going back in the same position. Okay, happy gardening. Bye now.